what we are talking about today, which is van versus trailer. We have a van, obviously. And I have a trailer. Actually, I have a trailer and a rooftop camp. So Ooh. we would like to look at some of the pros and cons of each, because the, especially on this last trip, mm -hmm. we certainly discovered quite a laundry list of both. If you're one of the people that log on to these videos because you just want the list and you want the information that we have, well, here's the information. A van pretty much won unless you're trying to get lost in the back 40. Otherwise, the adventure trailer won. If you wanna find out more about that and like our personal experiences because we just went on a trip that highlighted almost all of that, just keep watching. Okay, back to the program. Yeah. And there was enough that kind of went wrong, I'll say. It wasn't necessarily wrong. Nothing broke or was overly negative, but there was enough that went wrong that we didn't film this in the field. There was enough wrong where we didn't film this in the field. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. definitely a good way to put that, yeah. I mean, it wasn't really wrong. It was just the typical stuff that you're going to run into any time that you're not within arm's reach of your house, which they were, which was one of the benefits that we found on this trip. Yes. We have a Ford T250 transit van. We have the medium length and the medium roof, which means we have 12 foot in the back, and our roof is five foot and approximately eight inches tall. Right, and I took off in a Forerunner pulling a X-Venture trailer with a rooftop tent. Yep, a Condor, Condor XL? Uh, it is a Roof Nest Condor XL, yes. Condor XL, yep. yep. And you have the Annex. Yes, the annex that goes onto it to extend probably, I don't even know how many square feet, but it's, it's, it's a big room. It is a big room. It's a big room. Um, and, and it holds 22 gallons of water. Um, it has a water heater. It has your slide-out kitchen galley, um, a shower attachment on the other side. It has uh, two marine batteries. Um, now we have a solar charger with it, and uh, we can run 200-watt solar panels. But there's times when I look at it and go, wow, there's just there's a bunch of these different drawbacks that mm -hmm. are rough. And then I watch you guys, and I'm like, I wish I had that. I wish I had that. And then there's other times where I'm like, I'm, I'm glad I don't have that. I'm glad I don't have that. Yeah. The difference between an adventure trailer and a van. Because if you're considering getting one or the other, eh, there's definitely some pros and cons and some situations where an adventure trailer might be better and a van is clearly better. Number one for me was the fact that I can get places you can't. So I can get this little thing back with my rig to some, that was my goal because we did a lot of backpacking mm -hmm. and I wanted to be away from people. So I can drag it back some four wheel drive trail. Mm -hmm. um, it's very capable to get back there, set it up. Most of the places we've been, that hasn't been the case though. We've been we've been parked right next to you every time we've used it pretty yeah. much. One of the other massive benefits of a trailer, and it's not just an adventure trailer, it's any trailer. The fact that you can drop your trailer. No we way. dropped the trailer on this trip and literally jumped in their rig and drove into Tucson. Right, and so we'd go to the the museum, we'd go out to eat, mm -hmm. we'd do all these things, and not have to worry that our site would be taken when we got back. Yep, yep. And we left the van, because every time that you have to move the van, you have to pack it up. Albeit packing it up takes 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. However, you still have to pack up your home. Right, right. And of course, after three days of rain or four days of rain, probably wasn't going anywhere anyway for a while. <laughs> so we were driving in and out with my rig. Yep, yep. yep. So that was, that was a benefit. Yep, off-road capability is definitely one of those massive, massive benefits of that adventure trailer. Now, another thing was we built a diesel heater in order to stay warm. Um, so this was kind of a neat little device that did you talk me into, and I'm sure glad you did. Very efficient and so forth. Um, you know, ran a nice heat tube right into one side, kept it nice and toasty in there, uh, which is something that you just take for granted now because your van just has one built right in, and yet I'm hauling this thing around. It takes up a lot of space because mm -hmm. I built it into a tote. And uh, another, I think, big advantage of a, a, a van is that you start to take some of those comforts for granted when mm -hmm. it's really a pain in the butt for me to set them up. And, and a lot of that is simply the fact that when you build out a van, you build it out to be that mobile home base. Whereas an adventure trailer, you build it out so that you can you can live out of it, not in it. And I think that that's the biggest, biggest difference is if you're gonna be living out of something, you're not working, sleeping, eating in whatever you're living, whatever the, the vehicle is per se, right? Mm -hmm. That becomes one of the biggest reasons to, to pick a van. Right. Because if you're gonna be living in it, you need that space, you need that security, security being a little bit broader term here, right? Right. But you need that security to be able to be in 40 mile an hour winds <laughs> and not have your tent flapping a million <laughs> miles an hour keeping you up all night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that's one of the biggest pros as far as that van goes and the heater specifically i mean it's what you built is perfect it's just a massive tote basically yeah with that diesel heater in it running running the exhaust out and everything but you have to take it out you have to set it up you have to pray that the rain's not getting in the air intake while it's it's sitting there or the diesel fuel is spilling into your into air intake your <laughs> where your air intake's coming in yeah yeah that's exactly right that's yeah because exactly. we had some really good wind gusts there mm -hmm. and our annex had to come down because it was blowing all over the place mm -hmm. um and we weren't sleeping real well because things were flapping while you were mm -hmm. snoring comfortably in your warm place we were trying to figure out how to keep that thing from flying yeah. away and the next morning we get up and, and I'm struggling to stand outside in the elements, make some breakfast, look over and you're smugly eating your oatmeal or whatever from your uh, balcony pretty much, you know? Yeah. I mean, it really made me jealous that here you are, you wake up, you roll out of bed and you make yourself coffee yeah. while all indoors inside in the elements. And I'm standing out there freezing, mm -hmm. trying to get it warm enough to get everything done so that I can lure my wife out of the tent with hot coffee because she's not getting out of that bed. So that was another huge advantage. With hard walls, you afford a lot of comforts. Yeah, a lot less on the wind keeping you up. I mean, that yep. whole thing's flapping. I can't sleep a wink because mm -hmm. it's so loud. I think we're going to end up in Kansas. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm heading for Kansas where my ruby slippers were, were on our way. Mm -hmm. However, one of the nice things about your setup is that it packs down incredibly small. Okay. So that trailer may be two-thirds the length of the van. Right. And you can expand. In the van we have, it's 12 foot by 6 foot. And you end up with, if you set up your annex, I mean, it's practically a freaking house. Yeah. I mean, I mean you have hundreds of square feet. 40 feet by something from one end to the other. It's, it's huge. It's yeah. huge. It really and, and when you look down with the drone, I mean, it's very obvious that you have just a ton of space. That's not usable space in the wind. <laughs> well, not in that wind. It wasn't. Not, not in that wind, yeah. <laughs> After you've lived in a van for a while, you really utilize your space well, which you don't in an annex or in a tent. <laughs> Sure. Because you don't know what you don't need. So, yeah. if, but right. you learn to live with so much less. I mean, by the time we get done packing up, our first couple of trips, we had so much gear mm -hmm. that we didn't even use. It's funny because I think that that lifestyle, that minimalist lifestyle, yeah. really shows in the van versus us, which don't live that way, mm -hmm. which take way too much stuff everywhere. And yet you were still asking me for knives and cutting boards and other random stuff. Well, that brings me to like, I think one of the biggest points that I experienced on this trip was like when my wife woke up with 103 fever, mm -hmm. but I didn't remember to bring a, thermo a ther thermometer. Yeah. So, but of course I, I holler out to you and you're like, this is our house. Of course we have a thermometer. Yeah. And we have ibuprofen <laughs> and we have whatever you need. You need, need. BC powder, you need ibuprofen. Yeah, you had everything. You need... And it was like, yeah, I, I didn't think about packing that stuff. Right. Because we didn't know what circumstances we were going to run into. And yeah, knives, cutting boards, anything along that line, you know, you're just, yeah, sure we've got that. Yeah, sure we've got that. Yeah. And after yeah. a while, it's like, I think we brought twice as much gear and don't have half as much stuff. I'm looking at it saying there's some great advantages to a, t to a, to a van. It was mm -hmm. honestly easier for you to park it, put mm -hmm. it where you want it, than me to jackknife my trailer around until I got it where I want it. And then, of course, it needs to face this way, which, which you know, my, my rig would be hanging off a cliff if I put it where I want it. Yep. So there was, it was a lot easier for you guys to park. Parking indoor versus mm -hmm. outdoor sleeping and cooking. Yep. Um, the, the hard walls, not, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the elements, that type of thing I thought was, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, just so many benefits to the van over my trailer. But of course you saw a bunch of benefits to my trailer over your van. Yep. And one of the biggest of those is is literally the fact that you don't have a secondary car payment. If it's your only vehicle and you are living in the van, right? Then it's, it's kind of the same, same. Sure. But instead of going out, if you were to still maintain a house lifestyle and then have a van on top of that, I mean, that's a whole nother insurance payment. That's a whole nother car payment. If where you park it. Where you park it. Yep. Whereas a trailer makes it a lot easier in that case. Well, it's a lot less, it's a lot less upkeep and so forth. When we traveled down, then we stayed one place for one night. And yep. that one place for one night really showed how long it takes to set up an adventure trailer. Yeah. Because it seems like you'd be quick. You pop the, yeah. you pop the rooftop tent, you climb up there, you go to sleep. Yep. How hard is that? Oh wait, we, we have to, we have to level the trailer. Yep. Oh wait, we have to, it's going to be cold. We got to break you gotta out, the heater, out the heater, which means we got to pull out everything because it's in the back. Yep. Course. Oh wait, well, I want to make coffee in the morning. So I yep. got to set up the galley kitchen. I've got to attach the propane. I've got to, it took like two, two and a half hours for me to pack down to leave where you guys yeah. were ready to go. Just like, oh, oh, wake up. Okay. I got my cup of coffee. Start up the van. It's like, oh, we got another two hours for them to pack up. Never mind. We had dinner made and we were halfway through dinner by the time you were like, Hey guys, are you ready to cook dinner? Like, yeah, we're yeah, eating we're, it. We're like, done. <laughs> we're done. I was like, okay, I got my stove set up now. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll, I guess I'll start cooking. <laughs> and all of that sets up really quick. So there's definitely benefits to both, and that's hands down, like it, 
basically depends on what you're going to be doing. Right. If you're going out, you're a weekend warrior, and you want to go up, get lost, and basically not run across anybody ever, Adventure Trailer wins. Absolutely. If you're going to be living in it, or you're going to be doing extended stints in this, where you're down for a week or two weeks, and you're still cross country. Yep, you're still expected to work, or yep. you're still expected to be able to get in and out. Um, van. Van. Van, hands down. If you're going to be in any inclement weather, weather at all, van. Yeah, I think so, too. Now, this is by far not the only two setups that there are. There are a ton of different. There's RVs. There's all kinds yep. of different options. This is just what we have, so yep. this is something we can report back on. Yep. Well, we hope you found this interesting mm -hmm. and informative. And if you liked us, leave us a comment down below. If you don't like us, I don't care. Leave the comment down below. I'll reply with some funny lim limerick. <laughs> We're the NoCo Nomads. This is Nathan Wineland, my father outlaw, in-law. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and well, yeah, follow, subscribe. We'll uh, hopefully you liked it. Hopefully it helped you made a decision. <laughs>